Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Try it again. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Okay, I think we're going to need to get some sheets. You know where the sheets are? In the door? Have you ever done it before? Yeah. Can you get two? Maybe you need one too. And you need one. You know the song, Jaya Radha Madhava? Okay. <laughs> oh, what's your name? Cliff. Nice to meet you, Cliff. My name is Dravida. <laughs> uh, I think more people will be coming, probably. They do. And there's some online, too. This is a traditional song we sing before every class. And if you need a chair, don't be afraid. Or we have these nice benches now. You know. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava don't be, don't be shy. I'm just going to keep make sure to keep the beat, so I'll sing along with you. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Kopi Jana Bala Bha Kiri Varan Hari Gopi Kopi jana bala bha kiri varadhari Kopi jana bala bha kiri varadhari Yashoda nandana braja jana randana 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 Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Yamuna Tiravana Chari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Rama Rama Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Jaya Mishnapad Paramahansa Paravijika Charja Ashtoto the Tashishima His Divine Grace Shila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Bhavad Ki Jai Iskan BBT Founder Charja Shila Prabhupad Ki Jai Jaya Mishnupad Paramahansa Padrika Charja Ashtoto the Tashishi Mada Divine Grace Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thakur Ki Jai Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai Samaveda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glory to Sri Guru and Goranga. Okay. Yes. So we'll be studying page 340 today, text number 28, chapter 7.
You have text 28 on that page? Okay. And you too? You have a different book. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but you, you need some help? Can you help him find the page? Because he has a little disability there. Page 340. finish with the chapter. We may finish it tonight. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Okay. On this 25th day of October, Govardhan Puja Day, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And we are in Chapter 7, Knowledge of the Absolute, text number 28, page 340. You ready? Okay. Yesham tu andakatam papam jananam punyakarmanam te dvandva moha nirmukta pajante mam dridhavrataha Yesham Tvantakatam Papam Jananam Punyakarmanam Te Dvandva Mohani Mukta Pajante Mam Tadavata Yesham Tvantakatam Papam Jananam punyakarmanam te dvanvamohani mukta te dvanvamohani mukta pajante mam dudavrata yesham tvantakatam papam Jananam punyakarmanam te dvanva mohani mukta pajantem nam dhudavrata Go ahead, Dhammaraj. Yesham tvantakatam papam Jananam punyakarmanam Te dvanva mohani mukta Pajante mam dhudavrata Anyone else want to try? Okay. Anyone online? No. Yesham who's too but antakatam completely eradicated papam sin jananam of the persons punya pious karmanam whose previous activities te they dvanva of duality moha delusion nirmukta free from bhajante engage in devotional service mam to me dridhavrataha with determination Lord Krishna says to Arjun persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated, are free from the dualities of delusion, and they engage themselves in my service with determination. Purport. Those eligible for elevation to the transcendental position are mentioned in this life. For those who are sinful, atheistic, foolish, and deceitful, it is very difficult to transcend the duality of desire and hate. Only those who have passed their lives in practicing the regulatory principles of religion, who have acted piously, and who have conquered sinful reactions, can accept devotional service and gradually rise to the pure knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Then gradually they can meditate in trance on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the process of being situated on the spiritual platform. This elevation is possible in Krishna consciousness, in the association of pure devotees. For in the association of great devotees, one can be delivered from delusion. It is stated in the Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.2 that if one actually wants to be liberated, he must render service to the devotees. Mahatse vam dwaram ahu vimukte. But one who associates with materialistic people is on the path leading to the darkest region of existence. Tamo dwaram yoshitang sangi sangam. All the devotees of the, Lord, of the Lord traverse this earth just to recover the conditioned souls from their delusion. The impersonalists do not know that forgetting their constitutional position as subordinate to the Supreme Lord is the greatest violation of God's law. Unless one is reinstated in his own constitutional position, it is not possible to understand the Supreme Personality or to be fully engaged in his transcendental loving service with determination. Om Jnana Timurandasya Jnanandana Shalakya Chakshu Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkest of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So this is near the end of the chapter, and Krishna has, in, te in the last text, he gave a concise description of how we fell from the spiritual world. The understanding in, in Krishna consciousness is that, as Prabhupada would often say, we want to try to go back home, back to Godhead. Now that's a very kind of meaningful statement. The first, as soon as you say back home, it means that you used to be there. Otherwise, how could it be your home? <laughs> and that home is with God. Well, we don't see him here. He's not evident here. So we're far away from our home. And the question is, how did we fall? What are, what, what, what are the conditions there that we left? And what are the conditions here that we've been in for countless eons? We don't, we don't realize it. But the, fir the first lesson of the Bhagavad Gita is that we're not the body. We're spirit. There's a phrase that we learned. I remember when I first joined the temple, these little Sanskrit phrases that mean so much. Aham Brahmasmi. Dhammaraj knows what that means. What does that mean? I am spirit. I am spirit. I'm not matter. These, these bodies are obviously perishable. They're made of various uh, varieties of matter. You learned in, what, third grade that you're mostly water, but there's a lot of solid matter in there. There's the bones, all this flesh. There's air circulating. There's certainly fluids. There's blood and everything else. You have to drink a lot of water. So you have earth, water. Now where's the fire? Fire, we have a, a fire of digestion. And also we're burning all kinds of energy. That's what calories are. Calories got a bad name, but you need calories every day in order to fuel your energy. So we have earth, water, uh, fire, air, and ether. We're all taking up some space. These are the, the, the gross material energies from gross to subtle. But there's even more subtle energies. What about the mind? Each of us has a mind. And this mind is a, is a very subtle energy of God. And even finer is the intelligence, the discriminating power. And most fine of all is this ego, the sense of false ego. So this is taught in this chapter. But we're none of those things. And we're not the conglomeration either. But the main fallacy of, of, of living in the material world with no understanding of any of this philosophy is that everyone identified with the body. Certainly the, the animals do. You know, I mean, I take a walk every, every, usually in the evening, and there's a good portion of the people who are out there are walking their dogs. There's a wide variety of dogs. And the dogs are secure in their identity. They're not trying to be a cat. They're not trying to be a human. They're a dog. <laughs> and the people are secure in their identity as human beings. But what kind of human being? Oh, I'm wealthy, I'm poor, I'm American, I'm an, immig I'm an immigrant, I'm this or that. All of that, but like if, if, if you stopped on the highway, I'll, I'll just confess, it was about 
a month ago, six weeks ago. I'm a pretty safe driver. I haven't had an, a serious accident since. I, I never had a really serious accident. But I, this, this time I was thinking of something else. I was stopped at a, at a, a, a big intersection. It was like uh, Lamont and, and, and Grand, you know. And they had just put in these lanes, these um, bike lanes. And I was kind of confused. I was on, on the right side, and there was a bike lane there. And there's the red light, and right next to me was a cop car. <laughs> Believe it or not, but I spaced out so much that I started going. The red light was still red. I went right through the red light, and naturally, they right behind me with this cop car with the you know the red lights, and the, so I stopped after about ten yards. And um, naturally, they wanted to see my license and registration, which I had in good order, you know. So the point of my saying is that what is my license? You know, what do you have on your license? Well, you got your name, you got your age, you even got a little, I think your weight, you know, something. The color of your eyes, your address. All of these are pertain to what? Your body. What's your weight? You know, all of this is in your body. So this is how you're identified. Welcome, Hare Krishna. Would you like to you can take one of the books? If you want to sit there, you can just get the stand. And we're on page number uh, three, 340. So... Uh, it was interesting because one of the cops, you know, took that and went behind and get the license plate. And there was another cop, and he got around on the right side, and the window was open. And he started, because, you know, this is not you. He started asking me about what are you guys all about and everything like that. We have a temple down there, you know. Like that. So he, he was interested. And then by some miracle, you know, because I hadn't had a, an accident or a ticket in years and years and years. And they could tell that, you know, they plug it into the computer now. They can, you know. So he came back, and instead of giving me a ticket, he gave me this little sheet as a, as a warning. You know, he said, okay, you know, we're not going to punish you this time. I said, well, that's never happened. You know, that was far out. So I, I think I'll run out the clock on this body before I get another, <laughs> I won't space out like that. But what I'm, what I'm saying is that so much of your identity in this world is tied up with your body, right? You, you, you have a certain amount of money. Okay, I got a certain amount of money in the bank. Okay, well, that, that bank, they have your uh, uh, signature and they have your name and other identifying things pertaining to where you live and everything so that they can make sure it's really you when you try to get money out or you know, put money in and like that. So, so all, all around, you know, from when you're a little baby, your, this, this bodily conception is an, enforced. You know, your mother hugs you and, you, 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 you know, you, you, yeah, this, there's my mother and there's... A, there's, there's a friend of mine, this is, but this is my brother, you know. So, so, and all of that is an illusion. What I mean to say is, is that you as spirit, we've had thousands, uncounted millions of different bodies. Some of them human, some of them su subhuman, some of them superhuman. We've gone to their uh, heavenly realm where you can live, not God, not the uh, kingdom of God, but higher planets that are much more opulent. Just like even on this planet, uh, I, I've lived here since 89. I didn't like plan all and save up a lot of money so I could you know, move to San Diego. And it, it just happened that my service took me here. And I've been here ever, ever since, almost 33 years. <laughs> but there are people who said, oh, I wish I could live in San Diego. You know, they're freezing up near New York or something, you know, there's a big hurricane. San Diego is known for its ridiculously ideal weather. Although it's not always ideal, but it's, I mean, when I came here, I came from Miami, which is, you know, it was pretty warm, during, even during winter. I remember sitting, and they had a pool in the back. There was no water, and it was just, it was just, <laughs> it was just, there had been a pool. We lived on the beach, in, in Miami Beach. And it was January, and I was sitting there in my shorts, chanting my rounds, you know. But then you have the hurricanes come, so it's not all very nice, you know. So anyway, I came here, and, and <laughs> it was the end of July, and then in August and September, it was like, at that, at that time, I think before you were born, uh, it was by, between 72 and 76, and the clear skies every day. So, wow, this is incredible. It's so comfortable and like that. So what I'm getting at is that a lot of people aspire to move here, and some are fortunate enough to live in San Diego or the United States, whatever. But we don't know what kind of uh, bodies we had in previous lifetimes. The first lesson, what does Krishna say? He says, after a couple of preliminaries, Dehi no smin yata dehi, 
Komaram Yovanam Jara Tata De Hantara Prapti Diras Tatra Namuyati. A very illuminating verse. What he's saying there is that, okay, you may not understand how you change bodies from one body to another, but how about in this one body? Just think of this one body. All of us can remember, I mean, I remember like back to age five, I remember a few things, you know. So, but we all know we had a five-year-old body at one point. And our mothers will tell us, yeah, you had a, you know, a six-month body and a one-month body. And I remember when you were in the womb, you were in there too. We can't remember any of that. So the point, the body keeps changing. We have a little child body, and then gradually we grow up in our adolescent body. So even in this one body, we're transmigrating. The body keeps changing, you know. My body certainly now is different than it was even 10 years ago, or to speak of 60 years ago. So the body keeps changing, 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 changing. But we are the same person. What is it that doesn't change? The consciousness, the awareness that... Uh, I have this body, my name is this, my hand, my, my face, my mind. Who is it who possesses those things? That's the atma, that's the soul. And Krishna calls it here a dehina, it means literally an embodied soul, because not all souls are in a material body, that's another lesson. So, and then he says, and when the body dies, it breaks down, it's just a very complicated machine, it's not you. You, you leave the body and you go into another body. And there's a, there's a whole science of how that happens. And it all has to do with the mind. Because everything we do in life, we're, there's, there's a, 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 a record in your mind. A lot of it is subconscious, obviously. But what, what you do in your life, you have a certain amount of freedom to develop a certain consciousness. And as you develop that consciousness, and it's a little complicated with the modes of nature, that will be the template for your next body. And the wonderful thing about it is, in Krishna consciousness, Krishna says it in the second chapter near the beginning, Neha Bhikkhamanashusti Pratyavaya on the Vidyate, that in this process of bhakti yoga, which is a systematic practice of training the mind to get off the bodily platform, identify as a soul, and be, be Krishna conscious, and if you do it right, you won't have to get another material body. Because these material bodies are no picnic, when you really think about it. Because there's disease, even in, in youth there's disease, and if, if, if you're lucky enough, you'll make it to old age, which is no picnic, there's a lot of different diseases, and finally you die, and if you're not going back to God, and you come back again, and if you're really fortunate and you've done the right thing, you come back as a human being, but you may not. You may come back as a dog or a cat or even lower, depending on your consciousness. So this is, this is a science of consciousness, training the consciousness so we get the best next body. If we do it right and perfectly, we won't have to have any material body. No more death, no more old age, no more disease. We, ha we, we have an eternal spiritual body that's just made of consciousness, just like Krishna's body, you know, just like God's body. But we've, we've lost touch with that, we've forgotten that. And so now, we still have that dormant spiritual body and that conscious entity, that minute uh, atma, soul, is uh, encased in this material body. But we have free will, especially in the human form of life, we have intelligence. We can learn I'm not, how not to just uh, obey the, the instincts and the impulses of our senses, which is more or less what animals do but use our intelligence to guide our, our, our activities so that we achieve the, a, a certain goal, a goal of purity. <clears throat> and we have some experience with that. Suppose you want to become a, 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 a professional musician. You're like 12 years old, 13 years old. All right, there's a path to do that. It requires discipline. You, you know, if you want to become, say, a uh, guitar player, you know, okay. So, what are you going to do? Well, you have to get an instrument, right? And you have to find a teacher. You have to learn. Maybe you can do it online, whatever. But you have to do, do it a certain way and not another way. In other words, you can't, you can't just pick it up and strum it and expect to play right away. You have to train the consciousness, train the muscles. It means a, a certain discipline, what we call a, a dharma. And, and at the end of that, if you're successful and you do it right, you'll be able to play and make nice music. Right? That's the goal. That's the fruit. So similarly, in spiritual life, there are do's and don'ts, all for the purpose of training the consciousness so that finally at the end of life, when the body drops, first of all, you'll be free of fear. 
you'll be completely uh, aware that I'm not the body. It's just like if, you, if, if your car breaks down, you know, and you say, okay, I got my cell phone, we're good, you know. You're not afraid that, oh no, I'm abandoned here, I'll never move again. No, there are things that you can do, you know, if you plan ahead. Similarly, uh, if you face death in the full awareness of your real spiritual identity, then there isn't, I, I, I believe me, I used to work in a hospital back 50 years ago, in 71, 72 is more than 50 years now. And I worked as an inhalation therapist. These are the guys who take around, around the, the oxygen, you know, and ap apply that in certain chronic patients and everything. And I saw a whole bunch of people die. And ordinary people, it's the most terrifying experience. Generally, they, they, they sedate them. You sedate it. You're, in other words, you're drugged. So you have to go through that horrifying experience. You don't know what's going to happen. And in our literature, we're just reading now, in, in the morning class, we have a different book we read, uh, that if you're very sinful, you've, hurt, you've been very hurtful to a lot of people, and you, you know, you, this, this talks about undekatam papam, that your sin has ended. Well, if you do the opposite, then it can be a most horrifying experience because there is such thing as hell. There is such thing as punishment for, gro for, for grievous sin. And, and, and the entities who come to drag you out of the body and take you to that place are very, very frightening, terrifying. But for the devotees, and we've had experience, practical experience. Uh, we had, uh, you know, in one sense it was tragic. She was only 30, 38 years old, I think, Sh Shamali. She grew up in this community, very beloved young girl, very s sincere and wonderful. And she contracted the cancer. She, was in, uh, she lived in Florida at that time, a community in northern Florida. And her parents are both, were both here. They flew out, and, and, and I, know, I know Yamuna was with her at the end. And he described, she had friends all over the movement. They're contacting her through the internet and everything. And, you know. and uh, her spiritual master, her guru, was, was, was online from Vrindavan. He was, he was with her, and he was spending time with her and, and preaching to her and so and so at, at when the time came, uh, her father recounted it. It was just like she wasn't, she wasn't terrified. She just exhaled. And it was like the Vaikuntha dudas, the uh, messengers of God, were coming and picking her up and taking her out. And, and we had Rajendra Nandana Prabhu who had a very successful departure. You know, for, for several weeks he was in, in very calm, you know, hearing about Krishna and thinking about Krishna. So that, that's just a, something that we can see from the inside. From, from, their, from their point of view, it's, it's a liberating experience. So everyone's got to go through that, but if they're not ready on the spiritual platform, it's going to be terrifying. Everything, all your relationships, everything you treasure, the, 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 the confusion and the uh, dread that happens when you leave. So anyway, back to our verse. Yesham uh, Dandakatam Papam. He's saying here that for one who is free of sin, right, persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life, so that's Janam Punni Karmanam, and that not, not only free of sin, but they've done pious activity. And that most pious activity is devotional service, what we call bhakti. Uh, and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated. And what I get from that is not just sinful actions, but reactions. By, by, performing, by chanting the Hare Krishna mantra, by chanting the holy name, you eradicate lifetimes of, of sinful uh, activity that have a residue that's called a sinful reaction that can determine your, uh, your fate and, and, and cause you suffering even in this life. Just like we know, if you uh, you know, drink too much alcohol, right? that's not uncommon. You know, people get into, uh, uh, addicted to alcohol. And then, okay, there's some, there's some reason you start taking that. You want to have some fun, or you want to forget something, you want to you know, drown your sorrows, whatever. But if you become addicted to it, then the knowledge is there that you may hurt your liver, you may shorten your life, you'll ruin your brain, you know, it's, it's, it's damaging. That's why it's called intoxication. Toxin means it po poison. But, but sometimes it's, you, you're, you're addicted, you can't stop. It's like this one lady where I live. She's been my neighbor for a while. Her husband doesn't smoke, so when I see her outside, I know, okay, she's, she's taking a cigarette break. You know? <laughs> In this day and age, you know, I said, oh my God, you know. 
you know, your mind is telling you, I know it's bad for me, you know, I'm coughing, I can't climb the stairs like I used to. But still, the, the, the force is so great. That you, you, so, if, if, you, if you are free of all that and free of sin, sinful actions and sinful reactions, then you can overcome this delusion of duality, meaning that you're equal poised in, in, in you're, you're fixed in Krishna consciousness. And that means if something nice happens, you don't go, you're not overwhelmed with joy and happiness. And if something painful happens, you're not overwhelmed, with, you're not disturbed one or another. This is called e equal poise, which is an important platform to be on, mode of goodness. And then, bhajante mam dhritavata. This is not going back to God. This is simply attaining uh, firm faith and determination in, in engaging in the process of bhakti yoga, Krishna consciousness, so that you can go back to God. Dhritavrita means a, f a firm vow. Why do people take vows? Because they know that, I know that this is good for me, but if, I don't, if I'm not really determined, then when things get a little rough, I'll give it up. Right? <laughs> so, so someone who takes a vow... And, and, and fulfills it, and they're, you know, this is uh, an honorable person, someone who is, is, is uh, you know, we should emulate them. So here's how we can get that. We can stop sinning, learn how to perform pious activities in Krishna consciousness, and become equal poise in happiness and distress, and then we can become determined in devotional service. And then, uh, how does this relate to the previous verse? Well, the previous verse described how we got here to begin with. If we want to go back home, back to God, Ed, then we must have been there before. So then why would we leave? This is a big question, right? That is that, okay, now this is the land we've heard so many times. This is a land beyond dualities. If we have a satchit ananda body. Ananda means bliss. That we're always happy. We're, there's, there's no death. We're always, you know, there's, there's a, pastimes of God are there. Why would we ever leave? And, and the answer is, is that it is a mystery why we leave. From this perspective, we say, well, it wasn't very smart. But at the time, because we're part and parcel of Krishna, in other words, God is all-powerful, He knows everything, he's, you know, and He's inconceivably great. We have His qualities in minute degree. He has a, he has a form, a human-like form. <laughs> we have a human form. He has relationships and activities, what he call lila, play. You know, why would God have to work to get a paycheck? You know, he's in control of everything. So everything he does is play. It's called lila. But he's not playing alone. He has his, his uh, friends. He has his lovers. He has even his, a portion of where he has he's married. He has that kind of life. And uh, he's, he, has, he grows up as a child. This particular month... We're glorifying a pastime of Krishna's where he, he, he took the role of a little naughty child and hid his glory, you know, so that he could have a relation with his, his mother, his ideal mother. And so he stole some butter, broke a, broke a pot of yogurt, and, and ran away and was hiding from his mother. And so she ran after him and finally caught him. And so she wants to punish him. So in those days, and even today, you, 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 a child is too naughty. Well, the mother has so many things to do. It ties him up, you know, ties him up to it. So he, he agreed to be tied up to this wooden grinding motor. But when, when God does it, it's just, you know, out of love. It's not something, you know, to lament, oh, he's tied up. He agrees to do that because she's tying him out of love. She, she did that whole thing. So this is, this is a, uh, that, those kind of passages are going on there. Ideal pastimes, full of love and exchange of love and bliss. That's going on. Okay, so why would we leave? Why would we? we you know, that was pretty stupid. Because we have minute independence, and Krishna has created us with this little independence, so that our love will be freely given. Love cannot be extorted. As soon as you say, "Love me or else," then you may show the symptoms of love, but it's not love. It's out of fear, right? <laughs> So Krishna doesn't want, want that, that's not ple pleasing to Krishna. He wants us to freely, uh, 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 you know, join him in his loving pastimes. So that means we have a measure of independence. We can withhold that love. And we, who are in this material world, belong to the minority of souls. There's a lot of us, but there's many more who have never come, who made that experiment of trying to be Krishna rather than serve Krishna.
participate in his jo joyous activities rather than be the center of, of attraction. We're not made for that. Uh, that is not our constitutional position. We're, 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 we're very fragile, we're, we're imperfect, and because we identify with the body, material body, we're prone to all of this suffering. So, so, but we don't know that because we forget. This is, unless you forget your life in the spiritual world, you can't freely engage in this material life. So that's one of the things that happens that gives us forgetfulness. So now we want to try to, okay, that's enough. I've been do doing this for millions and millions of births. Now I want to go back. Well, then we have to train ourselves to have that consciousness we had when we were there. And that's a consciousness of service and love for the Supreme God. And it's a very joyous uh, life. And it's also one where you can, you can see, uh, again, I've been doing this for a long time, since 73. And I, I sometimes recount all of the, the pitfalls and the dangers that my contemporaries went through. They're, they're, they're now as old as I am, which is mid-70s, if they made it this far. And my God, I mean, if you, if you run around, in, 80, in, in the early 80s, there was this whole thing that happened with cocaine and the crack cocaine you know, things, and the AIDS epidemic, and, and uh, so many drugs that you take for a while and they do permanent damage, like uh, methamphetamine. You know, if you keep taking that, you turn into a meth head. We had one fella, poor guy, this is after I moved here, and I, I, I would walk uh, down the alley, from, I was on Grand Avenue at that time, and just to say, it's just, you know, a block away. It's like a two-minute walk. And he lived in the house next door. And he had a little uh, vehicle that would come that's especially designed for people like, like him, disabled. Uh, we'd pick him up every day or so and take him to, you know, wherever he was rehabilitating. Or he was in a wheelchair, young guy, and they would get the wheelchair on the, 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 the uh, vehicle and off he would go. And eventually I found out what happened. Yeah. You know, it was, he had gotten into too many drugs. I think it was cocaine for him or something. And it, it, this messed up his brain. He became disabled. He couldn't function anymore. And we had one fellow who just visited me a couple, a few months ago, who also, cocaine, cocaine, cocaine. He liked, he liked my classes. He would come, but he couldn't sit for more than five minutes. <laughs> he was so restless from so much, you know. He would get up and walk outside and come back. And, very bad. And this is now 10 years later. Now he's even worse. He came and then he said, oh, I, I can't find my car. I parked my car nearby and I can't remember where it is. You know? So the, the, the point is, is that uh, this is not a bed of roses. You know, we think that, that we can make our way here and make something. But there's all these things happening like right now, the pandemic that was unexpected, you know, worldwide it caused terror, you know. And now, okay, now we're over it. Now we can uh, pretend that it didn't happen and people are back to normal. But there's another one. There's another something. Is it nuclear war coming? You know, that's a possibility. I don't know. So this is the material world. So we should say, okay, I want to get out of it. So therefore, we need to become determined to uh, train ourselves. And that comes from uh, the present verse of, of learning how to act free of sin and to be free of the dualities of this material world be equal poise in happiness and distress, and to learn the techniques of bhajan, bhajante, that word is here, bhajante man judavata. All right, we kind of went uh, in various uh, directions in that. Is there any questions or comments on anything I said? Otherwise, you can move on, and here's the benefits of practicing Krishna consciousness. Text 29. Jada manana mokshaya Mama Shritti Yatanti Ye Te Brahma Tadvidu Kritsnam Adyatnam Karma Chakilam Intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age and death take refuge in me in devotional service. They are actually Brahman because they entirely know everything about transcendental activities. Now before I go on, Arjun, do you happen to know how to turn this thing off? Uh, the AC? Yeah, it's not AC, it's heat. I guess the switches are there, but I've never played with it. All right. I can, I can pull something. Yeah, see if you can. Yeah, yeah, it's a little warm. <laughs> I mean, is anyone cold? No. 
Yeah, I know. I, I put it on 74. I should have left it alone. Well, actually, we can open the door. Open the door for now. I'll get a little cool there. Purport. Birth, death, old age, and diseases affect this material body, but not the spirit soul, spiritual soul. Excuse me, not the spiritual body. There is no birth, death, old age, and disease for the spiritual body, so one who attains a spiritual body becomes one of the associates of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and engages in eternal devotional service is, uh, is, is really liberated. Yes. Uh, Aham Brahmasmi. That was just what we went through. Aham Brahmasmi, I am spirit. It is said that one should understand that he is Brahman or spirit soul. This Brahman conception of life is also in devotional service as described in this verse. The pure devotees are transcendentally situated on the Brahman platform, and they know everything about transcendental activities. A little more. <laughs> I don't know about you, I'm kind of hot, I'm sitting here. For four kinds of impure devotees who engage themselves in the transcendental service of the Lord achieve their respective goals, and by the grace of the Supreme Lord, when they are fully Krishna conscious, they actually enjoy sp spiritual association with the Supreme Lord. But those who are worshippers of the demigods never reach the Supreme Lord in his supreme planet. Even the less intelligent Brahman-realized persons cannot reach the supreme planet of Krishna known as Goloka Vrindavan. Only persons who perform activities in Krishna consciousness, Mam Ashritya, are actually entitled to be called Brahman because they are actually endeavoring to reach the Krishna planet. Thank you. Such persons have no misgivings about Krishna unless they are factually Brahman. Those who are engaged in worshipping the form of, or archa of the Lord, or who are engaged in meditation on the Lord simply for liberation from material bondage, also know, by the grace of the Lord, the purports of Brahman, Adibhuta, etc., as explained by the Lord in the next chapter. Okay. So, the first thing is, is that Jara Marana Mokshaya, one can become free from old age and death. That's what he's saying here. Mama Shritti Tantiye. Those who endeavor by taking shelter of me, they can eventually become free from old age and death. In other words, they break out of the bondage of birth, old age, disease, and death. Te Brahma Tadbudu Kritsnam. They fully understand Brahman. Now, Brahman in general just means spirit. And here it means the Supreme Spirit. Krishna is known as the Para-Brahman, the Supreme Spirit. But we're also spirit. We're also Brahman, but not the Para-Brahman. We're minute. So they know everything about the Supreme Brahman and the individual Brahman, Adhyatmam Karma Chakilam. And they know everything about transcendental activities. What is a transcendental activity? An activity that's not engaged in for any material motivation. Material motivation, we're very familiar with. So, so familiar, it's like a fish swimming in water. He doesn't know what water is. You know? I mean, what do they know? You know? That's just, it's, it's always there. So, uh, material motivation just means what we always do for, for our own interest, either immediate or extended. You know? In other words, we have, say, a, a family. So, if we're working hard to support the family, that's, that's not a directly for my own personal interest, my own bodily interest. But it's my, my uh, larger material interest because I identify with my family and, and I, you know, I have a certain attachment for them. So, but when the interest is simply how can I serve God? How can I uh, uh, increase my Krishna consciousness and my, decrease my body consciousness? There's a certain step-by-step -step way of doing that. This is called the process of bhakti yoga. When that is our focus, then that's, that's called uh, transcendental activities. You see, activities that are loosening our uh, bondage to material body and material consciousness and increasing our bondage to Krishna and Krishna consciousness, God consciousness. That's the activities you want to learn how to do. Just like studying this Bhagavad Gita. Not any Bhagavad Gita, but this Bhagavad Gita which is called Bhagavad Gita as it is, you notice that the purports are much longer than the translations. Without these explanations, then, because I read a Bhagavad Gita, I like to recount that when I first started, you know, on my, my spiritual path, Bhagavad Gita was known, you know, it's been known for, for a hundred, couple hundred years in America. 
And so there were various translations. I got a little paperback, Pegman edition. I don't know if there were any purports at all, but there was a nice translation. But if you just read the translations, and if they're, especially if not written by a, a devotee, uh, they may be very accurate in the Sanskrit uh, to English, but you won't know what to do. Because the Bhagavad Gita, you know, in certain chapters, Krishna tells you to do one thing. In the next chapter, he says, well, don't worry about that. Now do something else. And, and it's very esoteric and mysterious. So it's, it's, it's intriguing, but you don't, then, okay, now what do I do? You know, you may not even come up, you may, that may not even come up. You say, well, this is just another book that I've read. Like we would read, is this book still current? I mean, the autobiography of a yogi? Does, has anyone heard of that book? Yeah, I heard you know, yeah, even now. It's a, that was popular. There was a book by Baba Ramdas that everyone would read, Be Here Now, it was called. I think it's still in print, probably the 50th printing or something. And in there, there's the Hare Krishna mantra. There's a lot of other things. And you're not sure, you know, you really know what to do. But it's, uh, it's intriguing. It opens up your, uh, your, your mind, just like the uh, autobiography book, to the whole, whole possibility of yoga. And a, and, and a different state of consciousness. So in that sense, it's good. But the actual ABCs, what to do, it's, it's a you know, rigid path. If you, if you go off the path, you may delay your progress, obviously. So, but Srila Prabhupada's books are very uh, systematic, and he's giving us, as he says right at the beginning, it's not just my ideas. I'm simply uh, giving you the knowledge in a way you can understand, first of all, the English language, which is all important, but also in using terms and bringing you along according to uh, the modern consciousness. In other words, he's giving it some, uh, in a way, it's not compromising, but it's presented in a way that you can follow it and, and understand. So that, that is invaluable, and that's exactly what we get from this Bhagavad Gita. When we come to the end of this Bhagavad Gita, and Krishna says, all right, forget everything I just said, basically. He said, okay, you don't have to worry about karma yoga and jnana yoga or ashtanga yoga. Sarva dharma padachaja. Give up all these other dharmas and do one thing. Surrender unto me. I will get rid of all your sinful reactions and you will come to me in the spiritual world. In other words, you'll come back to me. But that, that process of surrendering to Krishna, and it has, it's, a, it's a life thing. It's not just I did, it, I did that on Wednesday, now I do something else. <laughs> You know, it's a moment-to-moment -moment surrender. Because now we're surrendered to the material modes. We're surrendered to our delusions of duality. We're, we haven't consciously surrendered, but we are, in fact, following the instructions of our lower self. Now we have to follow the instructions of our higher self. And the Supreme Self is Krishna himself. He's in, within each, each of us. He's there as a super soul. And you can, you can, he says in the, in the 10th chapter, very famously, Teshaam satata yuktanam bhujatam priti purvagam dadami buddhi yoga tamina mama piyanti te. For those who are endeavoring and serving me with sincerity, I give the intelligence by which they can come to me. He's in, he's in the heart. And he's providing us with intelligence. He's also providing us with forgetfulness, you know, and remembrance. So he can guide us. And uh, you can feel it's the voice of conscience, but it's, it's, uh, the voice is louder. You know, I mean, the more you practice, you can feel it. Because it's also coming from outside. In other words, he, he's saying, surrender unto me, do this, don't do that. Don't engage just in, in just gross sense gratification, because that'll cover your consciousness and it'll cause suffering. And you say, okay, I won't do that. But you have to have some engagements. And so there's a chanting, there's a dancing, there's a working, there's so many uh, engagements that you can do and with the same sense, the same mind, same intelligence, but they're connecting you to Krishna rather than disconnecting you from Krishna. That's the art and the science of Bhakti Yoga. Okay, if there is no discussion, we can finish this chapter. And this will bring us, get us going in chapter 8 next, next time. Sadi Buddhadi Daivam Mam. So this is, this is more benefits of practicing this process that he's outlining here. You get free from old age and death, and then other things happen. Sadi Yagyam Chaye Vidu. Priyana Kale Pichamam. Te Vidu Yukta Chaita Saha. Those in full consciousness of me 
who know me, the Supreme Lord, to be the governing principle of the material manifestation of the demigods and of all methods of sacrifice, can understand and know me, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even at the time of death. Purport, persons acting in Krishna consciousness are never deviated from the path of entirely understanding the Supreme Personality of Godhead. In the transcendental association of Krishna consciousness, one can understand how the Supreme Lord is the governing principle of the material manifestation and even of the demigods. Gradually, by such transcendental association, one becomes convinced of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and at the time of death, such a Krishna conscious person can never forget Krishna. Naturally, he is thus promoted to the planet of the Supreme Lord, Goloka Vrindavan. That's the home planet we left. This seventh chapter particularly explains how one can become a fully Krishna conscious person. The beginning of Krishna consciousness is association of persons who are Krishna conscious. Such association is spiritual and puts one directly in touch with the Supreme Lord. And by His grace, one can understand Krishna to be the Supreme Lord. I'm sorry, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. At the same time, one can really understand the constitutional position of the living entity and how the living entity forgets Krishna and becomes entangled in material activities. By gradual development of Krishna consciousness in good association, the living entity can understand that due to forgetfulness of Krishna, he has become conditioned by the laws of material nature. He can also understand that this human form of life is an opportunity to regain Krishna consciousness and that it should be fully utilized to attain the causeless mercy of the Supreme Lord. Many subjects have been discussed in this chapter. The man in distress, the inquisitive man, the man who want of material necessities, uh, knowledge of Brahman, knowledge of Paramatma, liberation from birth, death, and diseases, and worship of the Supreme Lord. However, he who is actually elevated in Krishna consciousness does not care for the different processes. He simply directly engages himself in activities of Krishna consciousness and thereby factually attains his constitutional position as an eternal servitor of Lord Krishna. In such a, a situation, he takes pleasure in hearing and glorifying the Supreme Lord in pure devotional service. He is convinced that by his doing so, all his objectives will be fulfilled. This determined faith is called Dhrita Vrata, and it is the beginning of Bhakti Yoga, or Transcendental Loving Service. That is the verdict of all scriptures. The seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita is the substance of that conviction. Thus saying the Bhaktivedanta purpose of the seventh chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita uh, in the matter of knowledge of the Absolute. So I, I wrote a little uh, motto that, that sort of summarizes some of these things. You know. <sighs> Every last body dies. Who can deny it? It's just the way it is. Every last, bo every, uh, every last body dies. Nobody dies. The soul doesn't die. Every last body dies, nobody dies. Wake up, wake up, and open your eyes. You're not that body, you're a pure spirit soul. Chant the holy name and attain life's goal. This chanting of Hare Krishna is the main sadhana we perform, and is open to everyone. There are no prerequisites. It doesn't matter who you are, how old you are, what your gender is, what, you know, how much money you have, nothing. It just requires a little bit of experimentation. I experimented faith. And, it, and it's a very, very powerful process, especially designed for this age, this chanting of Hare Krishna. So let's do some of that together with a little musical accompaniment, and we'll see the beautiful deity form of the Lord. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Hare Bo. Hare Krishna. Thanks for coming. We'll try it again tomorrow.